this is part 2 of the previous video about usual 3D prints. In part 1 we covered the essentials, a D-bag dispenser, because digging through a box like a caffeinated raccoon isn't classy, a balcony door stopper, Win Zero, Mi One, a pen holder for car lovers, a sunglasses stand because tossing them on the table is a crime, a case for glasses accessories and enough back lifts to feel mildly superior in the kitchen. Now let's continue this glorious journey. Next up, pop top can caps. Pop top is clever gadget designed to keep your drink safe from bugs and dust. It's a three part print that's easy to 3D print and since supports are already included in the model, you don't have to worry about adding them yourself. You will need one rubber band for assembly, but the process is straightforward and clear instructions are available on the model page. Variety is a plus. There are different pop top sizes, each with its own name light, slim, mini, jetty, max. It fits nicely on the 500mm can. Lid closes with a click and if you want to open the lid, just click the button. You can even print a TPU casket for the lid, if you want a tighter seal. I tried using 95A TPU but found that lid didn't want to close. A softer TPU should work better, but you can also use just rubber bands. 40mm works great for both places. I use these rubber bands. If you are a Monster Energy fan, there is a pop top version with the Monster logo just for regular cans. The Mega Monster cans actually came with closable leads built in. Super handy and honestly I wish more cans had these. Extra protection. With the rubber band gasket, the pop top is almost waterproof. If you accidentally tip over your can, you should be fine. Just keep in mind, results with TPU gasket can be different. Looking for something even smaller and more portable? Check out the drink can tab cover. It's only 3 grams, it requires no supports and can also help you open cans. Just push it on the tab, flip it open and then twist to cover or uncover the opening. It's not spillproof, but it will keep bugs and dust out of your drink. If you don't have 3D printer, but you need something to 3D print, just type in pcbweight.com and start ordering your stuff. There are many different types of 3D printing you can choose from. Different materials, PCBWay also makes custom PCBs. They provide CNC milling series, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding. This 3D printed valve is designed to quickly and easily regulate water flow in home or garden water systems. I printed it in BLA just to test the design, but PTG would be better choice for durability. The valve is printed at a 14.5 degree angle to ensure the gasket seats comes out smooth and even. Inside the valve, the two openings are at different heights. One is at the top, connected one end and the other is positioned, uh, positioned at the bottom. Second one is connected with the other end. It operates with the twist action mechanism. You simply turn the knob to open or close the flow. To make the valve watertight and fully functional, you need a gasket and O-rings. I printed one set with TPR and another with TPU. However, I ran into some issues with O-ring sizing. When slicing with Cura on my Atom Stack printer, the O-rings came out too large, while the gasket was correctly sized. Interestingly, when I used Bamboo Studio, everything printed correctly, so it seems to be a slicer related issue. After resizing the rings manually, I reprinted them. The gasket installs onto the knob, and there's another O-ring that needs to go there as well, which I completely forgot. You also need O-rings at both ends of the valve to seal it properly. 
The weld is comfortable with most of standard garden hose fittings. At first I tried TPU O-rings. The connection was super easy. Too easy. The water sprayed everywhere like fountain. And the valve literally shot off the hose. Turns out I had forgotten the O-ring under the knob which caused the water blast out between the knob and the body. I realized my mistake while editing the video. I thought it's just a crap design and I and that's why it's leaking so much. Lesson learned with the instructions on the model page. I took TPU gasket and O-ring off and replaced them with TPU filament. After swapping to the TPU O-rings, the difference was clear. The only small leak left was the connection between the valve and garden hose. It's quite an old hose connector too. With the newer hose, it might be completely leak free. Surprisingly, even without the ring, there was no leaking between the knob and the body. It actually worked really well once it's properly assembled. A very smart and practical thing to print. Just don't forget the ring like I did. TPR filament I used is made by Atomstack. Its hardness is between 50 to 70 percent, and filament diameter is 2.85 millimeters. Next up is another garden hose upgrade, the Ultra Bresol Hose Nozzle. If you have ever wished your garden hose had more fire hose energy and less sad result, and you have got a 3D printer, this might just be your next project. I printed mine in PTG, because this thing is going to see some action. The design is simple, one end as a standard hose connector that works with fittings like Cardena, and the other as a small opening to crank up the pressure. You will also need one O-ring, either 3D print it yourself or grab one from the store. The body is shaped to fit nicely in your hand. I printed my O-ring in TPR filament. Without the nozzle, the hose gave me a usually polite sprinkle. With the nozzle, things got interesting. You got to even block the opening with your thumb. For extra boost, great for a short blast, but after a minute your thumb will start complaining. With uh, my 3D printed O-ring, the fit was snug, but it leaked that a lot. On the bright side, the pressure was way stronger than I expected, enough to leave marks on old weathered wood. I swapped in store bought O rings, and the leaks improved, though not completely gone. This nozzle connection isn't quite uh, tight as the 3D printed valve I reviewed earlier, so I think it can be a design issue. It's like giving your hose a shot of espresso. The maximum pressure will depend on your water pump, but this thing definitely delivers a satisfying pressure. Next up, something for your phone photographers and serial selfie takers. An adjustable tripod. This thing is designed so well, it barely needs any supports. Just a few small ones and you are good to go. Assembly is super simple and there is a clear instructions on the model page if you need some help. I decided to give mine a two-tone look. Violet, GST 3D PLA Plus for the main body and Golden Bamboo Lab Silk PLA for the extra fancy camera gear vibe. The threads came out clean and smooth, so adjusting it feels nice and easy. There is also a tool for tightening the nut. It's fully printed, no extra parts needed, and the white base gives it solid stability. It's uh, adjustable, holds different positions well, and can double as both in tripod and self stick. There's even an extension piece if you want more height. The grip feels comfortable. Overall it looks great, feels solid and works well. The only potential weak spot, the threaded parts. If you are consistently tightening and losing them, 
they might eventually give up. But hey, if that happens, you can always print new ones, or go stronger with more infill, extra wall layers, or a tougher filament. And that wraps up part 2 of usual 3D prints. Give these prints a try yourself and let me know in the comments what worked, what didn't, and which one you are definitely adding to your print queue. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click the like button. If you didn't, well, there is another button too, but I strongly recommend the first one. And of course, subscribe so you don't miss more 3D printing projects, tips and questionable life choices involving filament. Thanks for watching and happy printing.